Hey everyone, Scott Cunningham, aka Scottsy Business. Today I want to talk about the difference between decentralized and centralized platforms, um, or rather the main difference in transparency and why this is the case and why this matters. You might notice that um, my image here, the video is a mirror image, it's flipped. And it's because I got this new sign and for some reason the sign is written backwards. No idea why they thought that I wanted that. So yeah, I'm just, I flipped the image to make up for that since there is no other fonts or text anywhere. So it shouldn't really affect anything. You might just be confused as to how the whole room flipped around and that is why you might also see over there on the shelf that I'm starting to get more props and, you know, nice, cool things to have in the vlog just to build out my setup. Um, I like the idea of having little knickknacks in the background that sort of give insight to your personality and like different themes of the podcast. So um, I'm going to be trying to do that more. So you'll see more little props popping up here and there. This is part of that. And so is some of the stuff over there. So yeah, you'll see, you'll see that more and more as we continue. But today we're going to be focused on the transparency difference in decentralized and centralized platforms. So one of the most obvious reasons for this is because centralized platforms have crazy huge user bases, like infinitely more than on decentralized platforms, not infinitely, but when you talk about, you know, like 3 million users to like 2.4 billion or whatever it is on Facebook, that's pretty insane. It's exponentially greater. So if, they decided to become more transparent. For most things, it wouldn't be an issue, but when it comes to certain things, they would have a lot of problems because of their user base. And one of those main problems would be gaming the system. So say Facebook told you everything it changed on every update, and they were super transparent about their exact algorithm and how it determines everything, and they shared it all in layman's terms, and every time they changed it, they let you know. That would be really great for content creators. Um, but people who aren't content creators, but are trying to monetize or do something with the system, they'll be able to game it heavily, knowing the exact nooks and crannies to hit, the exact character count to aim for. You know, there comes a point where there's too much transparency in a way that you're going to like, you're, you're going to enable people and empower people to abuse it more and more if you're too transparent. And again, it's not always for everything. I mean, they could give out the algorithm very generally, like what you should aim for. This is the things that you need to have in your posts. They're trying to do that a little bit more, a little bit more, but they're very not transparent. It gets worse when we look at things like censorship. So when someone is censored, they're almost never made aware why, what post, can't I just delete the post? Can't I appeal this? Maybe the moderator who is extremely biased in this centralized platform um, made a mistake. Nope, sorry, we're not even gonna tell you so you can't even maybe figure that conclusion out yourself. You just have to guess as to what happened. and. You know, that's just part of it. And even down to simple things like getting a verification badge on Facebook, they won't tell you why you didn't get it. You could just keep reapplying and they'll just keep denying and you'll have no idea what's going on unless you involve some, you know, enterprise level high up executive, which is exactly the case in uh, one of the situations that I worked with one of my enterprise clients. We couldn't get them verified, even though they should have been. And then finally, you know, we got an upper exec to come in and start dealing with it. And oh, you know, status, now we'll listen. Facebook really doesn't care about the, you know, the low level, the bottom end consumer, even though they make up the bulk of the platform, the bulk of their, of their money for advertising, all these different things, but they neglect them so, so heavily. It's like the lower middle class in society super heavily looked over, super heavily used for pretty much everything, 
they take care of the lower class and the upper class. And um, yeah, I feel like that's a great reflection of what Facebook has become and other major centralized platforms. But again, if you look at the whole platform, you'll see in the different places where transparency becomes less and less, it's worse and worse. And they're getting to a point where their overall transparency has become so low, you know, that people are leaving the platform now and it's starting to heavily affect them. If people had more idea of what Facebook was doing and it wasn't always just a surprise and then you had to catch up and Facebook doesn't care about how it affects you and your page and your livelihood for people who have monetized their pages and they live off of that in income. There's so many pages that they just ban outright, no question, no appeal, no reason, nothing. And, you know, these pages might have 10 writers that are being paid uh, every week and that's their livelihood. Maybe more than 10 writers, whatever it might be, they're ruining lives based on simple moderation things or just biases of you know, the people who work for, for them because it's so centralized and not transparent. Centralized platforms and anything that's centralized generally isn't transparent because they know what they're doing is wrong or they are so deluded that they believe it is so right. So Facebook might think we are definitely doing the right thing so much so that it should be so obvious that we shouldn't even have to explain why we did this. They shouldn't have the chance to appeal because we are obviously in, in the right and we can never make mistakes. And, you know, our, all of our employees are perfect and there's no bias. And, you know, they live in this perfect little bubble that is just completely unrealistic. And it's obvious that people make mistakes, that a platform is never perfect. And when you try to hide all these things more and more, it's, there's just this huge disconnect. I don't know if tomorrow Facebook will just delete my account just because they felt like it. And I just don't know. If you look at a platform that is decentralized, blockchain integrated, distributed, you know, the more we get into, the more we get away from the way that centralized platforms are built, the better it tends to be for transparency and everything else. So if we look at mines, you know, they just came out with a jury system. So say someone has an issue, they get reported by a person or whatever, and the moderator flags it, then you can appeal that and a jury of random people will then vote on whether or not that was fair or not. And, you know, it's obviously not perfect, but they're, they've just built this out very recently and they're going to keep building on it and expanding on it and uh, scaling it and just making it better and better. And the fact that they're pushing for this means that they care about the end user because the end user obviously cares about, you know, things being removed and moderated unfairly or whatever it might be. The ability to appeal even is huge, not on any other platform that I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, and their support is solid for issues like this and bringing these things up. There's, there's a lot to it. You know, when we look at their actual, you know, their algorithm, it is all there for everyone to see. You can look at the source code. You can look at the roadmap. What are they going to change? When, when will they be working on it? What's being worked on now? What just came out? You can see all of these things. Steam is getting better for this too. Steam has been putting out update logs as well. You know, they're always putting out like a monthly or bi-weekly blog to really summarize everything that they've added. You've got witnesses that people can vote for who will impact, you know, changes on the blockchain. There's just so much more transparency as you decentralize, as you become more transparent. Um, well, obviously, as you get more distributed, as you share the power and it's just it's so obvious when you take a very 1000 foot view look at everything, why transparency matters and how, and how it's going to save a lot of these platforms if they're willing to, to fix that. I really don't think that any of the legacy platforms are going to change what they're doing. So I think naturally they will slowly, slowly die until there's nothing left. 
while platforms that push for decentralization, free speech, and all that good stuff, they get ahead. I mean, the problem we're seeing now is we've got platforms that espouse the rhetoric of being for free speech and against censorship and, you know, for blockchain distributed network, all that stuff, but then they don't really. And they were just going off of the hype to get new members like DLive, which censors is completely centralized. It's just a complete mess. And the only reason people are going to it is because it's new and it has slightly better, it has a better setup than Twitch. Like they don't take platform cuts and a few other things that make it better than Twitch, but it's riding off of the ideals of being a blockchain platform and, you know, being for all the things that blockchain platforms have stood for when it represents none of those things in reality. So, yeah, there's a huge difference between centralized and decentralized platforms. And I think the easiest way to sum it up is that decentralized platforms, because they're run by the community, naturally, the community it's for the community naturally because they're run by the community it's made for the community and it's very focused on the user's experience and them having a safe secure unintrusive you know decentralized experience that they're not afraid to to just you know experience as as they please with no with no um, overly restrictive restrictions. Whereas when you look at a centralized platform, it's all about the advertisers, the shareholders, anyone but the end consumer. And that's the major, major difference. And it's heavily reflected in how transparent the platforms are with the different things that they're doing across all these different, you know, factors. Like we talked about censorship. We talked about updates we talked about advertising all these different things and it has a profound effect on the user base we're seeing facebook is becoming so untransparent that everyone is like starting to leave i mean that's not why it's 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 largely because of privacy because of censorship because of all these different things which all can be grouped up into them not being transparent. But of course, that is not the only thing. That is just a good way to summarize a lot of the different things that they're doing. Um, there's there's probably many good words to summarize what Facebook is doing, but um, they're probably a lot more vulgar sounding than not transparent. So let me know what you guys think about this. I think this is extremely, extremely relevant, especially for people who are wondering you know, why do they always change their algorithm and I'm left playing catch up? It's because that's how it's always going to be. And they're never, and they're not for the user. And when you look at platforms like Minds and, you know, Publish OX and, you know, they have roadmaps and this is what we changed. And they're trying to just be as open as possible to make your experience better and it's about the user and as long as they can keep these values they'll definitely win um our hearts i i guarantee everyone will end up switching when they realize how much better it is as long as we can keep to these values and uh and scale effectively let me know what you guys think in the comments below i'm scott cunningham aka scotty business signing off